Today we want to go to one of the most important biomolecules, and that is carbohydrates. So what are we going to The first thing we shall do is to try and understand the definition of a carbohydrate. After we understand the definition, we shall go to the functions of carbohydrates. And by functions, we mean physiological functions in the human body. So we are talking about physiological functions. After we cover functions, we shall go to groups or simply classification of carbohydrates. This topic is very important because when we come to metabolic biochemistry, where we shall try to understand these carbohydrates, how they are broken down to give energy, and how they are used to form other important substances. If you don't understand the basics of this biomolecule, if you don't understand the correct definition functions as well as classification, it might be a little bit difficult for you to capture the concepts in metabolism. So you should ensure that you understand the three points here. So I'll start with the first one. We shall just go into a simple definition. After all, definition is not what we are interested in. We are interested in knowing the functions, different groups and structure of carbohydrates. So these carbohydrates, when we look at it, before I go any further, carbohydrates. Imagine, as a student, you isolate carbon. And after you isolate carbon, you dissolve this carbon in water. So in this class, there is H2O. What happens when you get carbon and dissolve in water? You have hydrated a carbon. So you have gotten carbon and hydrated it. That's where the name is coming from, carbohydrates. Having said that, we are simply saying carbohydrates are made up of carbon, two hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen. But this doesn't mean all the carbohydrates on Earth, this is their molecular formula, no. All we are saying is that carbohydrates, they are normally made up of the elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, which are normally dissolved in the ratio one to two to one. This means that when you get a carbohydrate, you expect the ratio of carbon to oxygen to be almost equal, while that of hydrogen is normally by two. Let me give an example that you are very familiar with. Glucose. Do you remember the glucose that you used in photosynthesis? And the glucose that you used in respiration? That was in secondary school. What, what is the formula of that glucose? We used to write it C6 H12 or 6. If you divide throughout by 6, the formula will go back to 1 to 2 to 1. What does this mean? Let me ask you a question. Suppose I asked you to say a sugar has 20 carbon atoms. What is its molecular formula? How can you answer that question? You use the same concept I've explained here. Because carbohydrates are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, in the ratio 1 to 2 to 1, it means that their general formula is CH2ON, where this N stands for the number of carbon atoms. If N stands for the number of carbon atoms, and we are saying that this sugar 
has 20 carbon atoms, what is its formula? All you do is get the number of carbon atoms 20 and put it where there is any. So it will be CH2O20. Then start multiplying throughout 20 by C, C20. 20 by H2, H40. 20 by O, O20. That is the molecular formula. Can't this one go back to 1 to 2 to 1? It can. That's what we are talking about today, carbohydrates. You should know that this is one of the, mo it's the most abundant biomolecule on earth. Remember there are so many biomolecules we are talking about in biochemistry. Even water is included. We are talking about lipids. We are talking about proteins, nucleic acids, vitamins. What I'm telling you is carbohydrates are the most abundant biomolecules on earth. And very important to humans, diet. So what are the physiological functions of carbohydrates? So we are now going to functions. What are the functions of carbohydrates? Number one, the most important function is that carbohydrates are used as a primary energy source. Other books just say fuel, as fuel. Primary. Primary is normally something you start with. Just like there is primary school, secondary school. I think primary starts, then secondary follows thereafter. So even here, when we say primary, it means that if you were to feed my body with all the biomolecules, if you were to feed my body with lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, the body resorts to using carbohydrates first as a source of energy. So it's a primary source. And part of the reasons is the fact that carbohydrates are easily broken down. Within a few minutes, they are broken down to give you energy. That's why, if I was to faint right now, because I didn't consume anything, when I go to the hospital or any clinic, a doctor will not resuscitate me with a chop of meat or lipids. The doctor will get a carbohydrate. They will give me dextrose. Why giving me carbohydrates? Because they are easily broken down to give energy. So the patient will be resuscitated very fast. Primary source of energy. Number two, carbohydrates are used to make nucleic acids. What are nucleic acids? Nucleic acids. These are molecules that tend to store genetic information. This nucleic acid is normally found in the nucleus. There are two types. DNA. That is number one. Number two, RNA. They store genetic info. The same nucleic acids determines the characteristics of an organism. Genetical characteristics, which makes me be either a male or female. Even the phenotype, the outward appearance of an organism. That is determined by nucleic acids. We shall come to this topic and I will explain to you in details. For now, the take home information about carbohydrates is that they are used to make nucleic acids. What are those nucleic acids? DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid. This one, RNA, ribo. Nucleic acid. If you look at the name, the complete name, deoxyribo, deoxyribo, this name is coming from the fact that we use a deoxyribose sugar to make DNA. Even this one, ribo, because we use the ribose sugar. That's why we are saying 
we use carbohydrates to make DNA and RNA. The third function, and probably the last, but take note, it doesn't mean we have only three functions. As we progress, as we go to groups of carbohydrates, I will show you the other functions of carbohydrates. For now, the third and last function is carbohydrates help in cellular communication. To explain a bit on cellular communication, this is a topic you are going to cover fully in physiology. It simply talks about a cell, and this cell has got on its surface what is called cell surface receptors that receives information from outside. And these receptors, because they are always in an environment that is watery, they, are normally com they normally comprise of, or they are made up of, carbohydrates. That's what we are saying. For you to understand receptors, let me give you a small example before I, I, I can continue. I could continue. So the first example that I want to give you is this. When you consume carbohydrates, in physiology, you've been told that the levels of glucose in the blood increases. And that increase is detected by the pancreas through the beta cells in the highlights of longer hands. And then after that, insulin is produced. When insulin is produced, it goes to the blood, combines with glucose, and it transports glucose to a cell so that this cell can utilize the glucose to produce energy. But how will the glucose and insulin be received by a cell? It is received through a receptor. Which, what, which we call insulin receptors. And we are saying this receptor, most of the receptors in the cells that are found in humans are made up of carbohydrates because they readily dissolve in water. 